Look, it's a, it's a complex picture, Beverly, but so far there hasn't been a huge amount of progress for, for the Australian government. What we've seen since February is a very slow, partial and gradual easing of some of the informal restrictions that were put on Australian products back in 2020 when the relationship between Australia and China hit rock bottom. Uh, so, for example, from February we've seen coal slowly enter the market uh, to China from Australia uh, after a substantial wait of some two years. We've also seen a few other industries, including copper, beginning to find itself being allowed back into the, the country. But broadly speaking, most of the major trade barriers that were thrown up by Beijing in 2020 as part of that wider campaign of economic coercion remain in place. So that includes obviously the barley uh, and also the wine tariffs that uh, are currently going through the World Trade Organization appeals launched by Australia, as well as a raft of other informal sanctions on a host of other industries, including, for example, timber and rock lobster. So there has been some progress. It's not around the margins, but it's, it's also not hugely substantial, and there is a long, long way to go. Now, we did see the Australian government announce a potential circuit breaker for the Bali case about a month ago, when it said that China had agreed to an expedited review of those tariffs in return for Australia essentially pressing pause on its WTO case. It's not yet clear, though, whether China will actually take the opportunity to quietly drop those tariffs. If they do, then that's probably a clear sign that we really are making proper progress. Yeah, and it's a start that he's been invited to visit Beijing. But what do you think he wants to achieve? Look, uh, Don Farrell, when he, uh, when he, when he uh, arrived in China today, said that uh, he wanted to chart a pathway forward for those other industries that remain impacted. So, in other words, he wants to chart out a, a clear plan to systematically unwinding all of the remaining trade restrictions, both those that are still being contested at the WTO and the other ones. So there's a little bit of expectations management going on here. Don Farrell was uh, was keen to emphasise as he got off the plane that these weren't put in place, you know, in a day, that it took a while for these problems to accumulate and they will, he said, therefore also take a good while to unwind. Uh, but he's also separately said in interviews with newspapers that he hopes that trade will be basically back to normal by the end of this year, so giving himself a window, if you like, of some uh, seven months or so. So uh, no one is expecting that uh, he's going to emerge from this uh, particular meeting uh, triumphantly wielding some sort of guarantee from the Chinese government that all Australian goods will be allowed back in immediately without any difficulty. Uh, but uh, there is some sort of cautious optimism, you'd have to say, that at least on the Australian side, that gradually over time these restrictions will be unwound and perhaps within the next half year or so things will basically have uh, returned to normal. So if things return to normal, Stephen, on the trade side, what might it mean for the relationship more broadly? Well, I mean, that's a good question. And I think the government is sort of hinting that if they can actually make these breakthroughs on the trade side, uh, then that's going to automatically generate a bit of goodwill between the two countries, which could then help stabilise and eventually improve the broader relationship, which remains, you know, mired in deep tensions over a, a whole host of, of different issues. It's worth emphasising just how, you know, profound a lot of these differences are. Australia and China's interests at the moment are clashing on a number number of levels. Both countries have radically different ideas of the regional order, how it should be run, particularly as China accumulates uh, military heft and weight. Uh, they have radically different ideas about the Pacific and China's role in the Pacific. Australia and China are basically locked in an arm wrestle in the region uh, for influence right now. And then, of course, there are the innumerable differences over, for example, the consular cases that we see at the moment, Australians detained in China, China's resentful of blocks on Chinese investment in Australia, uh, as well as Australia's determination to lock China out of a few very sensitive value chains in Australia, including rare earths. Uh, there are differences on human rights abuses in China and Australia's capacity to talk about that. And the list honestly goes on and on from there. So, yes, fixing trade is important. Uh, yes, it might generate goodwill and help to stabilise the relationship. But as the Foreign Minister keeps on saying, no one is imagining that the, the relationship can somehow magically be transported back to the 2010s or so. The 
early 2010s, uh, when uh, when the uh, Halcyon days reigned, that era has well and truly left us. Yeah. Talking of tensions in the Pacific, Stephen, it appears Anthony Albanese won't be attending a visit between Joe Biden and Pacific leaders. Why do you think that is? Yeah, this is a, an interesting and, at least to me, a slightly surprising development. Uh, Joe Biden, the US president, is going to stop off in uh, PNG just briefly on his way to Australia from the uh, G7 uh, in Hiroshima. Now, at that uh, meeting or at that stop off, he's also going to hold a sit down with uh, more than a dozen Pacific Island leaders uh, in Port Moresby. This is a fairly landmark summit. It's the return summit, if you like, to the White House one that he hosted in the uh, American autumn last year. So this meeting is, at least in the minds of the White House and American officials, quite a big deal. Last a large number of Pacific leaders are attending, including, it should be noted, Chris Hipkins, the New Zealand Prime Minister. But interestingly, Anthony Albanese won't be attending. He'll also be returning from Hiroshima, but he won't stop off in PNG. Instead, he'll go straight back to Australia, attend Parliament and prepare for what will be a frenetic week of meetings, not just with the US President, but of course also the full quad leaders who are sitting down in Sydney uh, on, on that week. So look, it's uh, perhaps a slightly surprising development. I'm not yet yet confident to read too much into it, um, whether there's any deliberate signalling there or not. Uh, but I wonder if it might just raise more than a few eyebrows in Washington, despite the very close relationship between Australia and the United States of America. Yeah, I want to watch. Great to talk, Stephen. Thanks so much. Thanks, Beverly. Appreciate it.